And your heart starts pounding. I'm getting all nervous now. Come on, Wynn, come on back. Moment of truth, how good did I do? Congratulations, you've made it to part two. In part one, we learned about cleanliness, order, and some things to look for and how to find a kit and whatnot. In this one, we're gonna show you how to put it together and keep it together in such a way that it's gonna be reliable long-term. It's not rocket surgery, but you still wanna treat it like surgery. And you see the witness marks on this? We're gonna leave this put together for the most part. I'm gonna use my pick to separate it and make sure I don't miss any layers. But you've got your gasket and then you've got the diaphragm material. So I try to keep everything in good order. Try not to tear it up too bad. I hang on to everything just in case I want to use it for something in a pinch. You know, rescue a buddy or something. So this has two different ones and they're both kind of the same. It's just a different material on one of them. I don't know which material to use, which is best. This is what it comes with, so that's what I'm going to do. But this actually looks pretty cool wonder if it's an advantage to use one or the other and just put them together and just remember that the witness marks say that this goes to this and I'm just gonna go straight into putting it back together now this is kind of a tombstone shape so it's real easy to line it up it's gotta make sure that your little holes line up and by holes I mean it's got little bumps on it that you can line your gaskets on if you look this way you can see them there and there make sure those are intact Whenever you're tightening down a gasket, I don't care if it's an oil pan, valve cover, cylinder head, or even a carburetor. If you tighten down one side real hard, see how it's gapping on this side? It's kind of sticking out. It's tight here, and then it sticks up here. So if I do this side, then this hangs up, and it can cause a leak. So what you want to do is tighten down each side just a little bit and alternate sides so that it goes down evenly. If you do that, you get much better seal. And furthermore, and especially with aviation like this, it causes it to not come undone. When you tighten your wheel down, everybody knows you tighten in the star pattern. Well, with gaskets, it's the same way. So you just do an X pattern. So I'm gonna put my fist against the table. I'm gonna put this into my hand like that and push in hard so that there's no stripping. And I'm just gonna bind it down and just kind of give it a little snug, snug, snug. And you can feel when it just kind of bottoms out and says that's enough. You don't want to strip the threads, but when it quits moving and gets real stubborn on you, listen to it and stop. Now the next thing I do, if I'm doing one side or something, I'll just do the torque paint now, but I'm actually save it for the other side so I don't get it all over my hand. So this is what I'm working with. I just get everything laid out the same. You can see how this material's collapsed down into the gasket. You see the gasket on the other side and how the new one's just perfectly flat and nice. That's the new carburetor feel. That's the old worn carburetor feel. Now, ethanol gas, like I say, it really helps to get that happening for you. So this is all just old strainers and parts and stuff. Uh, I just lay it out like that. These are the old ones across the top. And then I've got the new ones down below. They're old parts, new parts. So here's another gasket. You can see how there's a ball on each side of that. And on this there's just a ball or a circle on one end. And then this one has it on both ends. So that's how you know which one to do. The real little differences, but they, apparently they do make a difference. So I'm going to look at the witness marks on the old one. And they're on the gasket side. And then the diaphragm, the little flapper, is going to be on uh, the upside in this case. You can see the lines in the gasket and you can see the lines on here so you know that it goes gasket side down. I've got these all aligned the same as this. We're going to drop that into place. We'll just line these up and stick the tweezers down the screw hole. There's nothing to hurt there. And you can see where the screen and the flap are. They go together. I just got two small screws. I really don't like that screw that's all stripped out like that. If your screwdriver doesn't fit, craft it, grind it, do something, make it fit, you know. Don't screw the screw up. Sometimes these are really hard to come by. This one's a mess too. Sometimes you'll find stuff like that from the factory, but I wouldn't think so, especially from Japan. Those guys are the masters of Six Sigma. That's a statistics term for saying that your process is really reliable, really consistent. I'm just going to snug those down. I'm not looking to deform metal or strip holes or rip threads out. I just want it snug until it stops.
spring goes in first and then these three go together this goes through here and it's a little tricky because you've got this little indentation and that's the giveaway that it goes to that side but this hooks into your needle it looks like an Empire State Building just drop that in there and see if you can get that rod to sneak down if you pull your screw out all the way it makes it harder to put it back together but if you don't get it out enough it's impossible there you go I got lucky on that one but I'll take it tweezers make all the difference just like a GI yeah. screwdriver does okay we're just gonna play with this before we torque it down make sure everything's nice and clicked together in its happy right place now we're gonna snug it I like that that's good okay so this gasket it has an alignment thing right here and here so we've got that in the right order and then the next thing to go on is the diaphragm diaphragm also has something that hooks in you can see that right there we need to get that to click into here Let's make it a taco and then turn this up like that and then it's super easy to watch it fall into place so I'm going to keep pressure on this and just make sure that that thing doesn't move at all until I get at least one screw in. I don't know, grit sucks. I should have cleaned my screws on the underside of them. Alright, so I'm going to loosen this one since it went in first. I'm going to tighten this one. Then go back to this one. Let's make sure it sits nice and flat. I'm going to show my hand on this one, what I do on these. I've got my fingers on the screwdriver. As I tighten it down, I kind of flex it like that. Just try to make sure that that's snug. I don't want this sucker to come undone. To the contrary, I focus on what I do want. I want the sucker to stay really good. So I'm happy with this carburetor. I'm looking over my parts. I'm really satisfied with the work that I've done. So I'm going to do one more wipe down around the screws. Once you've got your new gaskets in, stay out of it. Don't spray it with cleaner anymore. For all intents and purposes, this carburetor is like new. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to hit each of these. So I want to make sure that all of these uh, torque marks I can read easily when I'm doing a pre-flight. If my paint's cracked, broken, missing, etc., then it's easy to just look anywhere that there's green paint, make sure that it's not cracked or broken or some problem. So those I'll be able to see easy from that side. This I'm going to do from this side. This is way too much. But when you squeeze it, it just wants to come out and play. So this does two things. This helps you to know if you've got a screw on the loose and then it also helps you in that it holds the screw. It's like a glue and on anything, especially a two-stroke motor that vibrates a lot, that's a good thing to have a little extra help. So there you go. So that's real easy for me to check at a glance while I'm checking my motor mounts and my boot on the intake and everything else when you pre-flight check. I'll do another one on the cable when I'm done. Most everything including this, I'll leave a link in the description. Just click where it says show more at the bottom. So these are your reads. This is what you see when you're looking down at the carburetor. The carburetor actually mounts onto that. So you don't even have to do anything to get this off. It's just held on by the two bolts right there. So there's one more thing that I like to do. If you got some gaskets in here, um, it's a good idea to replace them so you don't get a vacuum leak. If you have that little squishiness, it's really beneficial. These are your reeds in a two-stroke engine. They're like a valve. It's like a one-way valve that allows your uh, air fuel mixture to go through this way. You see it kind of open or stick up just a little. So these go like this, like vibrating like crazy. And so they allow the air fuel mixture to come in. So you want to check them. Just make sure that they're working properly. You check them for being damaged at the end. You know, it's like crack the whip. You get most of the damage at the end here. But sometimes they can split or have other kind of damage happen just about anywhere. So just make sure that they're okay. So when you look down at the paramotor, you can see all the different green spots that I did. So everything's torqued down nice. These I can't see because the air box is on it. So I use just a little bit of thread locker. This is steel and aluminum, so it's nice to have some kind of barrier between them. A thread locker is a great idea in my opinion. Uh, but you could also wiggle the carburetor and see if it's getting loose. And you've just got those two fasteners. So by way of connection, you've got a couple things going on here. 
Uh, you've got your cable for your throttle. This has a little brass tube on the line so it doesn't puncture through it. Do not over tighten this. It'll basically work like a cutting device if you do. If it's too loose, uh, you're going to lose your throttle cable. That could really mess up your takeoff. Uh, if you have it too tight, it could cut it off and then that's no good either so you just got to get it just snug this one goes on here when you go to take these off so the trick to get these off is to burp them with your pick just go down around each side and just work around it with the pick and that'll get it to break the cold weld and then you can follow up with your pliers do not grab the hose this way that'll mess it up uh, think finger trap <laughs> not like electrical cord pulling from the wall so you actually push down you get your pliers so that they fit the gap like this and then you push downward watch out for your belt watch out for your prop you know don't be messing stuff up but if you push down like that you'll be in good shape so I'm gonna flick this and blow it and just make sure no rubber got ripped off there basically that's how you get these on and off and then your clamp it's pretty simple you just take some pliers and get it in place first like this and then you can push it and they'll rotate because the more you push the more it loosens it and just aim it this way with your prop so it doesn't stick out and give it a little tug so that one's on it's good to go then we'll just need to do the fuel line but I gotta put my head back on first but pretty simple stuff this just presses on and then I zip tie it and of course I use a green zip tie you can see the old one sitting on the floor and just another thing to check, just make sure your fuel line's on good. If this stops, if it fails, it does not matter. You can just coast in. You should fly based on things being right. Dude, I'm OCD when it comes to this thing. I want it to run like a top. I don't want to have any kind of issues or problems or anything that's going to cause me to make the news. So here's the finished product. I've got my air boot patched up. These air boots, you really got to watch them because they crack. I just put Permatex right stuff in mine when it's nice and clean. I'll, cr I'll pull this off, flex the boot, put it in there, and then close it and let it sit overnight. You see I've got my torque paint. Uh, I've got everything all squared away with my throttle system. It's got that little brass tube that stops it at the end so it can't go in too far. And uh, just everything is zip tied with green zip ties on the fuel lines anyway everything's in order i'm totally ready to rock all my clamps are good everything is torqued properly i've got my cylinder head back on i had that off because i wanted to treat it with extreme green on the cylinder and also on the bearings back in there i'm ready to fly in the morning i'm all fueled up pretty stoked the only thing i haven't done i mean i've replaced my springs recently had one of them break on the very end on the hook part and so i just replaced all four redid the cable with that i need to do my silencer i had a cr250r that had a problem with the silencer getting all the stuff being rotten or bad or full of oil and it caused a blockage and caused a power loss um, just went gutless on me down in cherry creek so i want to get this so that it's sorted out especially because i'm running way too rich way way too rich i'm still on the break-in cycle too much oil i just change the plugs more often but this is where that's all ending up and just really getting a lot of abuse look at that carburetor though carburetor looks amazing it's like spotless i love it bonus footage at the end awesome
subscribing doesn't mean anything anymore unless you click the little bell next to it. So be sure to do that too, and it'll notify you when I post new videos.